Mysterious places that will make you question everything. Let me talk about me. Drop a thumbs up, subscribe Mysterious if you're new. Mysterious places in this world, I immediately stop to think about Egypt and the pyramids. And I can't help but ask myself exactly how the pyramids were built. Who do you think actually made them? Do you think like there were humans that made it or do you think that something else made it? And when I say something else, I mean like UFO aliens. It's still impressive it and it's still... It was indeed humans or maybe something else. I'm not uh -oh. sure. The thing is, the pyramids and that entire what? area of Egypt, it's shrouded... What just happened? He just watched that and... ...in mysteries. Now, to make things even more mysterious, it is believed that there are tunnel systems and chambers below the pyramids and the Sphinx. How far down do you think it goes, Carlos? Let's see, I have a little light. Now, this is mostly because in the 1980s, a Japanese group of scientists using some sort of electromagnetic technology found out several cavities and tunnels just beneath the Sphinx, and two of them actually inside the Sphinx. The design is actually insane when you think about it. I'm not sure. Like, I don't buy that people made this uh but also it's like very hard to prove someone else made it right now because the sphinx is considered a guardian of lost knowledge most are convinced that these underground tunnels and chambers could lead to underground cities and even maybe a hall of records one that would contain the entire history of egypt and how it all happened but the fact is, these tunnels and chambers, even if they do exist, they're closed and forbidden for the general public. Do you see what I'm saying? That's that's actually kind of wild. But when you also think about it, like, I mean, I do think that people also can make this in a way. I know that's like an opposing argument. I, I totally understand. But the reason is that back in the days what were they doing they didn't have twitter they didn't have social media they didn't have youtube they just could do helicopters with their release and most of them probably didn't know how to do that so the best thing they could have done is actually make this happen and work on stuff that stuff like that because they had nothing else going on you know however in the 1970s zahi hawass and mark leonard two renowned archaeologists made a video of one of these chambers just behind the giza sphinx this is a snippet of the video that shows the forbidden chamber. Take a look. Remember the oh, secret damn. tunnel in the Sphinx's rump. They removed a single stone from just to the left of the Sphinx's tail. What? And sure enough, we Bruh. saw this passage going down in and under the Sphinx. <laughs> what? They descended into the shaft. Damn. Of course, we didn't know where it was gonna go. Mama always said, don't go like, don't go under like that. <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh. And so three weeks I spent down in the darkness underneath the Great Sphinx. Three weeks? There is three nothing weeks. hidden underneath. After they spent three weeks inside the hole, they discovered that there was nothing hidden underneath. Notice how Zahi Huas makes sure to state that in the video. Bruh. Yo. However, other researchers and experts believe that this is not entirely true. If you take a look at Bombaka! the video, there seems to be a tunnel system just next to where Zahi Hawaz is. In other words, <laughs> there's more, but they don't want to show There is more! There is more! It. And nowadays, this tunnel has been completely closed and forbidden for the general public. And this is the other... This is where things get weird. Recently, a couple of explorers went in this tunnel without permission and I guess they were caught after all. But the videos and pictures that they took were leaked to the internet and well, they recorded everything that was inside. Oh damn, oh this let's get it. This is what they saw. Dude, w, dubs in chat, dubs in chat, GG's brothers, doing God's work. Yeah, I mean, why not? Why not tell the public yeah. about it? Let's take the matter in our own own hands, huh? No, no. Okay, so that that's okay, kind of so locked away, end. locked off, or blocked off. Here we are under the Sphinx, in one of the forbidden holes. Ow! 
They were in great hurry and I completely understand why. But there is a very important moment in this video that one of them were able to capture a truly astonishing find. One that no one wants you to know about. And that would be this secret tunnel entrance that is shown in the video. But in the video we can't see it much. However, this gentleman took a picture of it. And well, there it is. It's blocked. As in, no one wants you to go there or even know about it. And what's even stranger, in my opinion, is that Zahi Huaz himself, inside the tunnel, didn't mention about it. The real question is, where does this tunnel lead? And why was it completely blocked? There could be a possibility that there is nothing. I know that's probably what you don't want to hear. And I also don't want to hear. I, I would like to believe there's something there. And there might something be out there for sure. 110%. But what if there's like nothing and it's just, you know, one of those things. They don't want the debris. They don't want sand. They don't want rocks to fall over. And they're like, okay, we're going to block it. But that argument is kind of bad, I realize now. Because you know they also have wooden planks it's not completely blocked it's not completely sealed off with something like a metal you know like a metal sheet not even a sheet like a metal plank if they were worried about that stuff they would have probably metal the entire thing out they would have probably blocked the entire thing out but it's just wooden wooden planks which can still fall off so yeah there is there something else i think so blocked out and not only that, no one mentions it officially as if it doesn't exist. There's a lead to hidden chambers within the Sphinx. It has to be something really big and important or else it wouldn't be hidden and blocked from the general public. Yeah, true. In your That's opinion, fine. what do you think is hidden within? If they hide it from you, if they're trying to, even if they're trying to hide it, hide it from you, there's some truth to it, man. The Sphinx and under these secret tunnels that are found all over Egyptian pyramids. Not only that, why do you think it's blocked and forbidden for the general public? Yeah, that's a good the point. The world that's a good is point. full of mysterious and unknown things that have amazed researchers for quite a long time. And Japan is a country of one of the oldest cultures that have kept the greatest secrets of previous civilizations. The thing about it is that some of these secrets involve encounters in the very distant past with USOs and UFOs. Uh, those of you that do not know USOs are basically UFOs but like underwater and if you if you see a UFO like uh, around water around sea they call it USO I believe under underwater submerged object I, I believe I think that's what they're calling it unidentified oh, submerged yeah, object and I believe strange as it might sound some of these encounters what? can be directly linked to many of the monoliths that can be found in Japan when it comes to mysterious monoliths in Japan, there's many, and with most of them, it's the same story. No one knows who built it, why, and how it got there. For instance, what, what do you, yeah, that's always has been a massive mystery. Why do you think someone made that? What could be, what purpose, for what? It's Ishino Hoden. It's a monolith that I've talked about in previous videos. It weighs about 500 to 600 tons, and it's a single block of perfectly carved stone that no one knows why, how, and who built it. Yeah, what purpose though? Or maybe they were just like, they didn't have, they were just bored. They, they, they didn't know what to do. They didn't have anything to do. They were like, okay, let's go out. Let's make a 600 tons block and just leave it there and just peace out. But it's not just Ishii no Holden. There are even heavier monoliths that are what? even more mysterious. Such Bomboka! as Masuda no Yawufane an 800 ton monolith that is located at Azuka Park. The story begins in 1803 when Japanese fishermen were surprised by something really strange floating just next to their boat. Curious, they dragged this underwater submerged object off the shore of the eastern coast of the Hitachi province. According to legends, the fishermen had encountered an Atsuro Bune, a hollowed flying ship and an alive foreign lady inside of it. What? The ship was said to be six meters wide. So you're saying that th this thing right here is like an actual like underwater submerged object found, but on ground? Be six meters wide and almost four meters high. And the inside walls had symbols 
similar to ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. Damn. Damn. You guys weren't expecting that. This thing was built in the Kofun Jidai. That's over 2,000 years ago. Look at this thing. I want to get up there, but I do not. So 2,000 years old. There's some rock climbing handholds, so I'm gonna pause it till I get up there. Alright, I made it. About to document some right angles for y'all. These, for instance, are some of the illustrations made by the Japanese of this encounter. And these, for instance, are the symbols that were written on the wall of the ship. Now, what's strange about it all is that these symbols are very similar to the ones that were found in the Roswell crash. Now, strange as it already what? is. What? For real? Your thoughts on Roswell crash? Uh, I know they made like uh, the entire like it's it's just a balloon. It's just a that. But there were so many people that were actually coming out and saying that yep, it's actually true. It was uh, indeed a crash, a UFO crash. But there are so many people also saying that it's not. But that's uh, the official saying that. Do you really want to believe them? I mean, damn. Is believe me, this gets even stranger. The lady inside the ship carried a box, and she had pale skin and red hair and spoke an unknown language that the fishermen couldn't understand. The story about this woman and her ship is mentioned in at least three different manuscripts. At first, researchers thought that this was an edited story about a shipwreck. But they couldn't see the the thing that i'm like seeing a lot is that a lot of people bring up like the older pictures the paintings i believe mona lisa picture painting is very famous you know there's like a lady i might be mixing that up with someone else but i think it's mona lisa with the ufo in the back in the painting and there are so many like pictures and uh attempts and also like attempts at making drawings that are thousands and thousands of year old with stuff that's flying in the air right and I would say that's actually uh, somewhat proof of these things existing now and they did exist before they currently are and they will and they are they have visited us, uh, visited us and they will they are still visiting us you know what I mean it's very very find any reference in the official documents to support this theory and as they start digging around they find more and more information about this Utsuro Bune and according to them, they found at least 11 documents that tell the same tale of this Utsuro Bune from the Hitachi province in 1803. Now this is where the Masuda no Yafune monolith comes in. Researchers started to believe that this monolith actually resembles the description of the Utsuro Bune, the USO that fishermen had captured in 1803. Uh, but if they, if there's no security here, if they're not trying to block people from seeing, then I think this is just a rock. It's a strange rock. For what pur what purpose does it serve? I'm not sure. Why is it there? That's an interesting question indeed. Uh, there might be some truth to it as well. Maybe somebody actually made this rock by actually seeing the actual UFO, USO. That's a high, high probability as well. But I don't think this is anything too special. It might be special in terms of, hey man, somebody actually saw the real thing. And they just carved this out and made that into a shape, into a literal form. That's special. But other than that, I think this is just a rock. And this is why they're not blocking people from seeing. But if they are actually blocking and this is kind of like that leaked video then damn yeah it's just a rock but still interesting not denying that still interesting and it's massive yeah I tried to lift that one up huh incredible incredible <laughs> Incredible. In fact, this monolith has the same size as the Otsurobune that is described, and it also looks like a flying saucer. So whatever this monolith is or represents, it looks like a flying saucer. You see, there is like a plane behind this ball of light. So this ball of light, this ball of light, this ball, this ball, this ball, not... I think these are not man-made stuff, but there was plane behind that with the aviation, normal aviation lights. And to this day... You see, very easy to spot. This is man-made, this is aviation, and this is not. No one knows exactly where it came from, how it got there in the middle of the... See, the plane is just flying in line 
but these things are just all over the place. Like, the, the, this guy don't even care. They're like, okay, I'm just gonna <laughs> Just gonna break pattern. Woods. And who built it? Plane is not breaking pattern. Yep. If you've ever researched mysterious places, you've probably come across the magnetic hills or the gravitational hills. All right, so this is gravity hill. Car is in neutral. And we're moving. <laughs> and we're moving. It's head and we are moving. Hills that can be found all over the world. Slopes where things that should go downhill actually go uphill. Damn. Yo, these type of things are very trippy to me because there are places where gravity doesn't exist. Uh, yeah, obviously there's man-made areas where gravity doesn't exist. I'm not talking about that. That that's artificial. But I'm talking about the the actual. There are places, and especially this, like it's going up. I, I don't understand this. Something to do with magnetics. I mean, that's the, it's something to do with magnetics. That's the official answer, right? But like, look at that, homie. Just press triangle. Oh, like, hey. I mean, like, that's Bomba card! It's still crazy, it's still crazy. Now, in most cases, these hills are just illusions. It looks like it's going down when it's actually going up. And there's a very good explanation to how these illusions actually happen. What? However, sometimes... That's an illusion? And I got cucked? Bruh. Sometimes it's not an illusion. Sometimes it's something else. Something that we can't quite explain. Megalo. This is the case with this video that we're about to watch. Take oh, a look. So, so this is that not an is illusion? Downhill. Or is it? See that tricycle? It's going downhill. Look to the right, it's CBY's farm. If you look to the other side, that is the top of the hill. As you can see, I go down, the elevation is going up. Now, yeah. Lorex will demonstrate that it is not magnetic since you will see that the water, water. aside from cars, flows uphill. Oh, damn. See, see those leaves? I'll turn around, Al, and show where it's coming from. See those leaves? Those leaves are going uphill, not because of the wind. In fact, the wind now is blowing the other way. So if you see that hill, that piece of leaf, oh man, it got that stuck. piece of leaf, Bumba really God. streaming up. Oh, that's a fast uphill. boy. Uphill. That is probably the only one of its kind here in the Philippines. Now in this case, we have water and everything else going uphill when it should be going downhill. Curiously, it's not the only place in the world where this happens. Now there's another video coming in from another YouTuber in another country where he tries to prove that the gravity hill isn't an illusion. Check this out. So we're just about what, like maybe like 10 minutes outside of Fillmore, California? Yeah. Okay, so here's the downhill. Okay, now we're look, going... it's, it's flat right here. Look, see how it's flat Yeah, right we're now? going, no, we're going downhill right now. But you're saying we're gonna roll backwards? Yeah, we're gonna roll backwards. That's even trippier, because so... this is not flat, this is downhill. Oh, neutral? they're gonna put neutral, okay. All right, taking my foot off the Moment brake. of truth. Off the brake. Get the heck out of here! <laughs> what? Yeah, we're going backwards. Why are we rolling uphill? Bruh. Dude. No, what? I think God is just bored. I think God just woke up one day. He's not sleeping or waking up. But, but you know, hypothetical. Let's just talk in human sentences. What makes sense to us humans? The peasants, all of us peasants. Uh, I think God was just like, okay, you know, I'm just gonna wake up today. I I'm feeling kind of bored, you know, feeling kind of cute. Let's actually design this. Uh, let's ruin the design. What the heck? That's <laughs> trippy. Were you not impressed, man? I mean, it's all right. It's in this case, a YouTuber by the name of Brian brought his girlfriend and a friend to test a gravity hill just outside of Fillmore, California. And at first, his friend wasn't impressed. He thought it was an illusion. But they did bring equipment to test it, and well, they were surprised. Damn, minus so we two have degrees. A level here on the iPhone. Negative two degree downhill slope. Downhill. It could be better. How are you not impressed? How does okay, it make that, sense that, to you? I thought, I thought the level would have it going that way. 
Now I'm kind of getting hyped up. <laughs> this is so getting, it's going a little weird. In this case, Brian and his friend prove that it's not an illusion. It's actually supposed to be going downhill, but it's not. While using a level, they find out that it's minus two degrees down. Impressive, isn't it? So if it's not an illusion, what's really going on here? Now, there are other places in the world where this happens, and it's even more impressive. We'll actually see an example here of Gravity Hill. Hopefully, are they doing it or are they, are they going to do it? Are they doing it? They're doing it. Okay, here we go. Neutral. No, not reverse. Neutral. There they go. <laughs> Bro. Bumbaka. Isn't this fascinating? But let's give it and a try. And here it's, and here like the, you can see it's kind of steep, right? Way more steep. I would say this is more than negative two degrees. And the car was, it seems like that the car was coming back a, a lot more faster. Two. So here we go. Which is completely right, opposite. So now he's going to attempt at it. Now you can see we're going this is more like here. minus 10 uh, in my opinion, I think. We are going down here. Up here, yeah. it's a white line, and then put it in reverse. Yeah, neutral, neutral, correction, neutral. What's the speed? I would say this is like five Fast kilometers, speed. maybe ten. <laughs> yeah, you can feel that it's going up. This time we really didn't go that far. In Dan Bell's video, to me at least, it's really clear that this slope is going down. It's not an illusion of any sort. This was recorded in Lewisbury, Pennsylvania, and there's gotta be- you Imagine, imagine there are more places like that, but people don't even know, because normally, if you're on the road, you're likely not doing neutral. You're likely just putting parking or drive or reverse, uh, and you're not really thinking about it too much, right? You're just driving normally as you would. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure who was the first person to find this glitch out in the matrix. That's kind of crazy because you would genuinely would have to put it to neutral, and normally you don't put it, or do people put that normally i don't know i don't have a driving license so i'm just uh, talking out of my ass or anything uh and shazza like that but something strange about pennsylvania because scott's odyssey youtube channel also recorded something similar however in bedford pennsylvania check this out uh if you look back toward the truck it looks like a downhill from here it looks like an uphill this is gravity hill um another thing i'm going to tell you is definitively uh -oh. As we're walking here, the muscles in my legs say that I am walking downhill and my brain is saying I am walking uphill and it feels really weird. This ball, in focus, down. Oh, it's going down. The hill. You ready? Alrighty. Here we go. Go, Mr. Ball. Go, Mr. Ball. Breaking, breaking, breaking. It's going to come back. You can reach the start. You can... Mr. Ball, Mr. Ball, where are, you, where, where are you going? In this video, Scott's Odyssey does several experiments and one of them is this one with the ball. I'm not sure, however, if this slope is really a gravitational hill, an anomaly, or if it's an illusion. If you've ever been to this specific place in Pennsylvania, please do drop a comment. Now what I've noticed about most of these gravitational hills, at least the ones that are not an illusion, is that most of them are close to a mountain or they are on top of a mountain. It must be linked to some sort of metal like iron that is located massively beneath this place and somehow it messes with gravity. This is at least my observation of most of these places. For instance, this video was captured by La Nature YouTube channel and it shows exactly what I'm talking about. Take a look. In this video, we can see the two gentlemen in the Algerian desert going what's supposed to be down the hill. Damn, it's kind of dry out there, huh? Then they stop the car, put it in neutral, and this is what happens. Quality poo poo. That will not work, brother. Habibi put that on the uh, brother. 
And oh, he's going fast. He's but going uh, back way too fast. I'll beat this. But it's hard to see where. I'll beat this. Oh. It's really hard to see whether he's uh, like putting his foot on the paddle. Obviously, I'm assuming he doesn't, and that's why the, this video exists. But you cannot see that, right? He's like toying around like he was like. Yo, why is he toying around that thing like that, bro? In this Stop video, we like can that. clearly see that these men are going uphill when they're supposed to be going down. Now, to sum this all up, I believe that there's some sort of anomaly linked to metals beneath these gravitational places. It could be iron, it could be something else, but I'm not too sure. What's your take? What do you really think happened? Any any scientist, any any astronaut around, let us know. In these gravitational hills, is it just some sort of illusion? Or is there a really good explanation to why this is happening? There's What's gotta be. Take? There's gotta be an official, uh, official response to this one from the government by saying that yeah, no, 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 man, it, it doesn't exist. You're just, uh, it's just an illusion. Uh, you know, there has to be some sort of an official an, an, uh, answer to this. There's no way. Might be a dumb answer. When but I was younger, I used to, to study be. the pyramids in Egypt. The or, or might be a legit answer to it, like you know what I mean. Mayan and the Aztec cultures, the Hindu culture, and there was something strange about it. Something that made me question absolutely everything about our past. Mm. And it's the fact that there are these small breadcrumbs that were left that actually point to the fact that maybe there was some sort of intervention from a more advanced civilization that most likely helped us build these huge megalithic structures. Breadcrumbs like the perfectly cut stone circles and corners. Stone, which, um, which engineer Dan is going to put a flashlight on the backside so that we can look through and get a good idea of what's what it looks like. Perfect. Wow. The fact that there are some of these megalithic structures that have magnetic anomalies within them. If you take a look, for example, in Hindu paintings and writings, it sort of points out to the fact that they had some sort of flying machine back then. And it doesn't stop there. If we start taking a look at each of these breadcrumbs and connect the dots, it kind of points out to the fact that maybe some sort of technology was used. Yeah, th this is kind of like what I was talking about it earlier as well. There are so many instances where there's art and drawings, paintings and stuff like that. That's thousands and thousands of years old. That suggests that UFOs and aliens are real. And someone was here before and someone is still visiting us and whatnot. But uh, do you think that's just imagination of those people because they were just bored and they wanted to, okay, we're going to do this. Do you think that's just imagination or, or you think there's truth to this one? used in a very distant past, a technology that was lost in time. No. Oh my god! Hey, look at you! Hey, look at you! Hey, look at you! Hey, look at you! Hey, look at Now, to this day, no one has uncovered or unearthed any kind of object that kind of proves this, at least that I know Oh, she got boobas? But this might all change with a discovery that was made in May 2020 by archaeologists that were digging a site just next to the Angkor Wat temple when they made a stunning discovery. Oh, we got a monk out here. Oh, god damn, he about to get real, man. He about to get serious. It's cleaning. Now, just what in is case you don't know cleaning? what the Angkor Wat temple is, it's the largest temple in the world that was built a thousand years ago, devoted to one of the main deities in the Hindu culture, Vishnu. The excavation that these archaeologists were any any Indian Indian homie in the chat, uh, by any koi koi bhi Indian homie hai in the chat, let me know, man. Conducting unearthed a large stone turtle statue, thought to be dated to the 10th century, and the sculpture is one of the several rare artifacts recovered from the temporarily drained Strathstrong Reservoir. Now here's where things get really strange. Yeah, he cleaning, bruh. There's a square in it? There's like water? Wait, what? What, you, what are you Archaeologists doing? found secret compartments inside these turtles that were excavated. Bumbaka! Mega lol, bro. Like, there's like stuff and like that. And of course, that. they opened them. <laughs> and lol, once they man. did, inside one of the turtles, they found a mysterious dark liquid that was kept there for thousands of years. And to this day, they don't know exactly what this liquid is. 
Not only that, they found hundreds of perfectly cut and polished quartz stones all put together. They also found buried together with the quartz stones, bronze wires, and what they believe to be some sort of high quality metal trident. Oh, the real damn. question is Bruh. why were all these artifacts? Uh, wrong sound effect. This is the one I wanted to play. Put together and buried away for thousands of years. One theory is that it's just a coincidence, and another one is that it was, it just a coincidence. was used for some type of communication. Let me explain. Polished quartz crystals are used nowadays in semiconductors for transistors, integrated circuits, and the first radio communication devices, for example, they were done using crystal quartz. Is it possible that they were using these quartz crystals as some type of radio communication? At first, it sounds crazy, but if you stop to think about the fact that they had bronze wires buried together. Now, bronze is not a metal, it's an alloy made of multiple metals. And nowadays, you can go to any store, buy bronze wires and use it for relays and electronic circuits. Now, add to the fact that they had a high quality metal trident that was buried together with all of these other artifacts. They could actually be using that as an antenna. In other words, this could be. Bruh. Bombaka. Uh, I mean, okay, that's a good point, but but I don't know, man. Like thoughts, everyone. Do you think that's possible? Some type of evidence that they were using some sort of radio communication device of some sort to communicate with something or someone else. I mean, anything is possible. I'm not trying to make fun of that. I'm not doing... I know it probably came across that way. I genuinely... Um, think there there could be some truth to that. But at the end... Because at the end of the day, like, now, yeah, we got the technology. Yeah, we got, like, these boxes. Yeah, we got antennas and stuff. But back in the days, we didn't have that. There has to be something else that would have existed that people must have used to communicate. And surely, like, imagination would have been wild. Because right now we got so much imagination, but back in the days when technology didn't exist, nowadays a lot of people are wasting their time on social media. Most people don't even know how to think properly. Back in the days, people had a lot of time to think critically, right? Because they didn't have all of these distractions. So I'm sure something must have been made uh, where they were able to come up with something that could communicate. The question is, who? Now this is all very strange, but to make it even stranger, since 2007 scientists and experts have been receiving strange and mysterious signals coming from deep space. They're calling these signals fast radio bursts or FRBs, and to this day they've recorded around 85 of them. Damn. And here's the thing, we will never know like what these signals mean, or maybe thousands and thousands of years later, if the planet is still on and still alive, maybe we're gonna find out, but when you think about it, right, like the day we make contact, I, I genuinely feel like that we already made contact, but the, day we, the, but the day we officially, it's fully revealed worldwide, right, everybody knows, the day like that happens, that we made contact, I, how are we gonna communicate though, right? When you th really think about it, can you communicate with an ant? Can you communicate with an animal? M maybe dogs, cats to a certain extent, dogs most likely, but you can still not like, you can tell them what to do and they might understand you, but they cannot communicate as, uh, you know, we don't speak that language, right? How are we gonna communicate with that? Like, that's just one of those things. Like, they're probably not gonna be able to just speak English. They're probably not going to be able to just speak whatever language you speak, right? Or maybe, or maybe, I don't know. Because they're advanced, you know, they, they might be able now to. Now what makes this all even weirder is the fact that each of these signals is unique. It never repeats itself. Scientists and experts are baffled and they believe that these signals are coming from some sort of advanced civilization in space. It's yeah, it's ne it's never the same. It's Bumbaka! It's not just a random signal. So if this is all true, it could explain the fact that maybe what we're looking at here in Cambodia could be evidence of some sort of radio device that was made to communicate with these more advanced civilizations. It could actually explain the fact that our ancient civilizations had so much knowledge about the stars, about construction, about mathematics, yep. and many other things. 
They they did. Th that I do believe. They did. It could actually explain the pyramids in Egypt, the Vimanas in the Hindu culture, and much, much more. In your opinion, what do you really think happened in a distant past? And do you think that by any... Ladies and gentlemen, click on this video on the screen if you want to actually continue this uh, investigation. Subscribe and I will see you there.